Hello and welcome back to Men in Hoodies. I'm Brent Lyons. And I'm Jake Stoop. Hoodie up and let's start the show. This show will showcase everything Arlington sports, from basketball and bowling to something as liquidous as swimming. Men in Hoodies has it all. We've got a good show planned for you today. Basketball season is already upon us. Representatives from the boys and girls teams will be joining us today in the studio. Before that, let's take a look at how our fall sports teams finished out their seasons. The varsity cheer team received third at regionals and second at state. The team has not been this good in years and will be competing at nationals in February. Boys cross country was led by the regional runner-up, Brent Lyons. He led the Tigers to a second place finish in the region and state qualification. Girls cross country qualified for state with a third place finish at regionals. With all girls in the top seven returning next year, the future is looking bright. The football team finished four and six under new head coach Tommy Miller. The Tigers improved two games from last season. The golf team was led by Braden Beveridge and Chase Van Ostren. The young squad was still able to qualify for regionals. The soccer team finished 10-4-3 and three with the season ending in the district tournament against Collierville. The schedule was one of the toughest in the district, but the Tigers still clawed away 10 games. The Lady Tigers volleyball team finished 9-8 and eight on the year. They lost to Houston in the district tournament, but they send Bailey Hall to Arkansas State to play Division I. Congratulations to all our fall athletes, but now it's basketball time, baby. We got some boys basketball players with us in the studio today, Drew Ellis and Luke McBride. It's good to have y'all here. Y'all had your first game last night, but Luke, we want to start with you. What is your best memory playing basketball? Uh, probably one of my best memories playing basketball would be last year during the uh, playoffs, district playoffs. Um, going into halftime, right before halftime, I hit a, a three-point buzzer beater for my first three of the season. Went one for one, 100%. <laughs> so that would probably be my best memory. What about you, Drew? My best memory. So it was my eighth grade year, and I think it was, I think it was a playoff game. I'm pretty sure. It was a big game. And I remember it went down to the wire. I think we went in overtime. And there was about 20 seconds left, and I shot it from I shot it from probably where I shouldn't have. But I just pulled up from about 30 feet, and I made it. And uh, we went up three. I think I, we got the steal, went on to win the game. But that was a big moment for me, you know, because I had always liked to live for clutch moments, and mm -hmm. I didn't care if I made or missed shots. But, you know, I never really hit one like that before. Mm -hmm. So to do that for that, you know, that first time was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we talked about best moments, but we're going to go all the way back to when you guys started playing basketball. What was your like, kind of first moment that you can remember from when you started playing? Um, probably one of my earliest moments from when I started playing was back in the um, Bartlett Rec League. I think one of my first games mm. ever was I dropped nine points. <laughs> and for, and that was hot stuff back then, wasn't it? That's pretty high right there. But yeah, and the other team only had nine points. So oh. I dropped as much as the other team. There you, there you go. go. So I remember that. What about you, Drew? Okay, so first memory, right? That was, man, as far as back as I can remember, I was probably like five or six years old. And I always, you know, basketball was not my first sport. I love football. Mm. But one day, me and my dad, we would always play. And we went outside and we tried basketball. And I, ever since then, I just was in love with mm -hmm. it. So I always had a basketball in my hand since then. Yeah, there you go. Well, let's move into the season as of right now. Luke, how did off-season work go with summer, summer ball and workouts? Yeah, so this year, we, um, we definitely put in a lot more work in the off-season as we did in past seasons. Um, we started all the way back in the spring, just a couple weeks right after our e season ended. We were eager to get put in the work. And that's what we did. We started with, like, uh, weightlifting and we did uh, a lot of playing and then also in May we had six practices and mm -hmm. then uh, we also had summer ball this season it was pretty successful summer ball we had a lot of wins uh, we had some losses but that's just gonna happen but we we grew a lot during summer ball and mm -hmm. and then coming into the school year we uh, had um, off-season workouts four days a week it's a lot of work Mm -hmm. All right, and then Drew, this one's for you. Speaking of kind of growing and I guess losing things either over the off season, whether transfers, graduating, or people just not playing basketball anymore, you lost a lot. But what are some things that you gained or that you think you lost? Well, you know, we're not going to run from the fact we did lose some pieces and some guys that were big contributors last year. You know, you, you lose guys like Carl and RJ, definitely guys that were big contributors. RJ brought a toughness to this team that we got to figure out who's going to bring that back. You know, whether it be Luke or me or if we got somebody else, but. I like, I like to focus on the now and what mm -hmm. we have. And so what we did gain, we have we got another year of experience, which is you can't replace that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have other guys that didn't play a lot last year that are playing now. You know, you got, got guys like Alex Wiley, uh, Tyler coming off the bench, and, mm -hmm. and Cruz. Cruz didn't play last year. So we're looking for other guys to step up and, 
in the grand scheme of things, I think we gained a better culture. Mm -hmm. You know, last year, you know, it was it was a it was a tough season for everybody. Kind of got thrown together really quick with all that happened, and we did the best we could. Mm -hmm. But we we looked to build on the culture and play more together. And you can already tell, oh, yeah. that even in yeah. summer ball, yeah. we, we, we like being around each other, we love mm -hmm. each other, and we want to get better. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every practice, we get better. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Quick follow-up, how has Coach Marlin helped with that? Oh, he's huge, mm -hmm. huge. Coach Sharp, man, he, he's, he's special. He, may, he makes us feel valuable, but at the same time, he challenges us. You know, you, you can't just get on everybody all the time. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure you know, they care, but uh, it's definitely going to help him taking a bigger role because sure. Coach Sharp knows the game. He, he played at a high level in Memphis, and he played college. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's going to be big having him on that staff taking a bigger role for us. Yeah, Luke, question for you. Last year did not go as planned, not the best record on paper, but mostly because it was a young team. I like most of our players were sophomore starters. So how for you, how do you all think you all can improve with some experience under your belt? Yeah, with that year of experience under our belt, um, We've, we've grown a lot. You've definitely seen strides. We're definitely more mature. We know how to play. We don't get sped up by other teams. That was a big problem last year is we played, when we went into a game, we would play their game. We didn't play it. We didn't play our game. We'd play to them. We'd play their speed of basketball. But this year, you can see we don't speed up as much. We know how to pull the ball back. We know how to play slow and not speed up to other teams. And I think that's a big thing. Because, like, uh, we're a team, we're not the most athletic team ever, and we're not the team with the greatest athletes, but we're a team that we can slow down, and if we run our offense, we can get buckets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's just how it's been. And so, like, with that year of experience, that's helped us a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, Drew, this one's for you. Uh, we've talked to a lot of coaches and players around the Tigers basketball team, and it seems like you're the one that always comes up as being a leader. How do you carry yourself with that to be, like, that leadership kind of guy for the Tigers? Well, you know, first and foremost, be, being a leader, it, it's something I don't run from. I've always felt like I was a natural leader. But at the same time, uh, I don't take that as, like, you know, I'm just the title of the leader. I take that as more responsibility for me. What, 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 what do I mean by that? I mean to make my teammates better. And I, I truly mean this. You know, it's too, a lot of people say it, but I truly want my teammates to do better than me, and I want them to succeed because the more they succeed, the more team, the team succeeds. So mm -hmm. I've always tried to put people before myself, and, and I've put the work in. And I, and I don't mean I doubt myself. I have confidence in myself. But I've always tried to make, you know, people around me better, and I want to elevate others around me. Because the more they elevate, the more t the team elevates. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I'm confident in who I am as a player, and I know who, who, I, who I am, and nobody's going to tell me who I am. So mm -hmm. I, I try to bring the team up, and I want to set the temperature in the room. Yeah, that's definitely the best level of leadership is making others around you better. Mm -hmm. That's good. And what are y'all's goals for the season? This one's for both of you. What do you hope to see when you come to March? Uh, definitely uh, just win as ga many games as possible. <laughs> Take one game at a time, you know? There you go. Not focusing on the games for the weeks to come. Focus on the game that's tomorrow night, you know. Mm -hmm. Focusing one step at a time, growing as a team. Because we already know losses will come. That's just how what happens with any team. Mm -hmm. Losses will come, but what we do to respond to those losses. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we want to take them. And just to be ready when playoff time comes. Mm -hmm. There you go. What about you? We've been preaching it since off season. We want to compete. Every practice, every workout, every game, compete. And so if you, if you focus on competing, you compete every practice, you compete every time in the classroom, when we watch film, and individually, you know, taking care of yourself. You, you compete in all facets of the, the grand scheme of things. If you compete, we're, we're, we're confident results will end where they may and we'll win our share. Yeah. So. And then uh, you guys had your first game last night against Melrose. Kind of walk us through how that went as your first game. Uh, we came in the game. I think we started off up ten to four, but um, then we kind of started. Uh, they started pressing and started pressuring our ball, mm -hmm. our ball handlers, and then we kind of got out of it, uh, out of our lead. And it was a close game. Uh, ended up losing seventy to sixty four. I think was the ending score, but um, it's something to grow on. You know, we we have a lot of things to work on. Uh, I think our biggest things are is our rebounding, our not turning over, and just set, getting into the offense and setting it up. Mm -hmm. And we've been preaching that a little bit. We've already seen it in our scrimmages. That's the things we need to work on. So even though we did lose, it was a good loss, and it showed us the things that we really need to work on. Yeah. So it was, it was kind of yeah. opened our eyes to what we really need to do. Mm -hmm. Well, we're really excited to see you all this season. But that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us at the desk today. We have a new member in the media crew here at AHS. However, that is not her main focus. Brittany Wells utilizes most of her time on the basketball court, but her journey has not been so easy. My name is Brittany Wells, and this is my basketball journey. 
Um, I started playing basketball when I was like five or six. I grew up around it. My dad and my sister both played. So just watching them, I kind of just picked up on it and decided I wanted to play. My dad was really hard on me. He still is to this day. And just like seeing how successful he was in his in the time he played, it just showed me that I could do anything. And just working hard, it just motivates me. Seeing progress, it motivates me. My coaches, my friends, my family, they're all very supportive. And my inspiration would have to be my sister because of her size, she does a lot. Like coaches told her she was too small, but like now on the college level, she's won MVP, um, all tournament player of the year at her college. So it's just big inspiration. So I was playing at Houston High School. I was playing with um, Naya Morant, um, Deja Richmond, just some of the, you know, people who really helped. And it was going good, and then I tore my ACL in a game against Briarcrest. Little that I know is that um, they were playing at Collierville High School against Briarcrest, and I was sitting in the stands just, you know, watching Britt play because I hadn't seen them play in a while. So, of course, I'm always support my babies. And so, um, just in the midst of the game, I'm not sure if she made a, a hard cut or whatever the case may be. She ended up going down. I thought it was over. I thought my career, everything just went blank. I was depressed, you know, had to go through therapy, physical therapy, had to go through surgery, and it was just a dark place in my life. So my mindset right now is I just, have to leave it all on the court. It's my last year. I have nothing to prove. I have nothing to hold back. So with that being said, I just, every game I just have to bring it because it's my last year. I mean, that's all. I have no doubt in my mind that um, Britt will have a great season. Um, she's surrounded about around good players as well. Um, I mean, everybody pushes one another. She makes the team um, look better every day. Um, so there's no doubt in my mind that she would, wouldn't have a great season. I know she's going to perform well every game. And um, Britt told me that she's going to take me back to the state and to get a state title. So I, I trust that. I believe that. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see how far she takes us. If I continue to work hard, I feel like in a few years, I could be playing WNBA, one of the biggest women athletes of all time, just with my work ethic and allow me to, or I could just play overseas, anything. Just feel like it would help me a lot. Basketball would take Britt um, as far as she want to go, as far as she wants to go. Um, just really can't dictate that, it's on her. But I feel like, me personally, she can really get far. She's a really good player. Um, and she, she do like really great things on the floor. Um, she's smart, she know the game. So I think basketball can take her far. It's just on her. Uh, Brittany is a soft-spoken, sweet young lady who, uh, who is very humble. Um, Man, off the floor, she's a good, a great kid. You know, I never really have any problems out of her. Um, she's in love, I can say that. <laughs> but uh, on the court, man, she is a dog. I can say that for sure. She's a dog. She plays a hard out. Uh, she's very, very skilled. I don't know if she get it from me or her dad or her sister or her mom or whoever it is, but she's a very skilled player, fun to watch. Uh, and I see her in the near future uh, playing for any D1 program that accepts her and, and later on in life uh, playing professionally in the WNBA or wherever, it, you know, basketball takes her. I wish her the best in any and everything she does. Thank you, Brittany, for that report. We're also joined by two members of the former district championship team, AHS Lady Tigers, Brittany Wells and Taylor Miller. It's good to have you all senior and freshman on the opposite ends of the spectrum here. But we want to ask you first, Taylor, you're new here. What is your first memory ever playing basketball? 
I'd have to say church league, and we were coming out of halftime, beating this team by like 70 points. They had to reset the score, and I think we still ended up beating them by like 30 points. Really? So that was a fun game for me. My parents were my coaches. They were just encouraging me the whole time. So. What are you, Brittany? Um, I think being Bartlett last year, you know, yes. because the first time, you know, they came in our house, they beat us, you know, they danced on our logo, went on social media, made memes about it. But you know, the, we stay humble about it. We ain't say nothing. The next three times we played them, we beat them. W's. Yeah. Those were good wins. Good I wins. It felt games. good. It felt yeah. really good. Uh, and just like with the boys, we talked about our favorite memories, but what is the farthest back memory you can remember your first time with basketball that you guys can recall? Um, uh, my dad used to work at a community center. So basically just after school every day. We would just, mm -hmm. since I was started like seven, every day just in the gym, he worked me out, you know, just putting time. So that's why I like thank him for that, you know, just me and my sister every day, just getting better and teaching us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's yeah, same for me. My parents, we were always in the gym, um, probably first grade, kindergarten, around that age, just playing in little leagues, my parents coaching me. Yeah. yeah. So Taylor, back to you. You're new here to Arlington. Not a many people have seen your face before. Kind of describe the transition from Carterville to Arlington. It really hadn't been that bad. I've enjoyed it here so far. Um, I have made a lot of friends. I've had friends from Carterville, still like reaching out, making sure I'm doing good. and. It's just been fun so far. And then, Brittany, this one's for you. You also came from another school, uh, started out in Arlington, but then you kind of had a transition through middle school and stuff like that. So kind of walk us through what that's looked like for you. Um, so I was at Arlington Middle three years. Um, I was the leading scorer. All I time. broke that record. And so my, when I, my freshman year, I went over to Houston to play my uh, one year with my sister before she went off to college. Coach Ashley was also there. So basically, you know, I played there for two years and I tore my ACL in the 10th. So yeah, I took a uh, year off. So my junior year, I came over back over here to Arlington with Coach Ashley because she has my best interest at heart when it comes to basketball and just outside of basketball. So yeah, I just want to be, my dad wants me to be around her, you know, cause she really helps me a lot outside yeah. of basketball. So. Taylor, this one's for you. You're the daughter of head football coach Tommy Miller. This one's kind of for the kicks and giggles. How is he different at home than he is at school? He's really not that different of a person. He's very serious. He likes to get work done, but like we still have fun. But when it is time to work, we do work, and we work hard, and we get stuff done. Brittany, and then back to the basketball side of it for you. What are you thinking of the team so far? I know a lot of cha has changed since last year. So how, what is your mindset going into the season? Um... You know, we lost a lot of key pieces last year, some seniors, some tall people. You know, we're really short this year. Not much height, but I see the girls, and we're just going to have to work extra hard, you know, be in more shape so we can we have, we have to run teams at the gym. That's how we're going to get our wins. Yeah, like I said, we're not that tall. But improvements, um, I feel like we're becoming closer, Coach Ashley, making sure of that we have that chemistry, we're getting that chemistry. And... Just this season, I'm going to keep them together because it's my job as a leader, as a senior. And just, you know, work hard. Yeah. And that's whatever the outcome is, it is, as long as we work hard. We all keep doing what you did to Melrose last night. We shouldn't have yeah. a problem with that. No. <laughs> but Taylor, for you, what have you learned from your older teammates like Brittany since you've been here? Um, they've been very welcoming to me as I first came in. They've been very encouraging. And we just get after it and we compete in everything we do. And when we do that, we're going to get big wins. Yeah. And then, Brittany, this last one's for you. In the documentary, Coach Shields said how she thought that you were going to be the one to t take this team back to state. How confident are you in that? I'm very confident in that. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you know Coach Ashley, she knows the game. She's a legend in Memphis. Mm -hmm. She knows the game better than anybody I know. So as long as I have her by my side and she trusts me to do, so if she trusts me to do it, then, you know, I'm going to work hard and take her back to state. Mm -hmm. yeah. She knows it. She you just great. Well, I let's hope y'all take us I back to a district championship. And while you're at it, beat Barlett a couple times for us. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at the desk today. Yeah. Now we turn to our next segment, Coach's Corner. Brent sat down with Coach Ashley Shields to discuss the upcoming basketball season. Let's see what our WNBA championship winning coach has to say about this season. 
All right, I'm here on the set of Coach's Corner. I'm joined by Coach Shields. She is our girls' varsity basketball coach. Coach Shields, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into it? Um, my name is Coach Ashley Shields. I'm from Memphis. Um, I'm a Hall of Famer here. I graduated from Melrose High School. Um, I went to Southwest Junior College here. I was the first girl to get drafted out of junior college after one year, straight to the WNBA. Um, so I made history and um, I had a great career, a professional career. I'm a WNBA champion, played with Detroit Shock, but I got drafted by the Houston Comets um, and just kind of took my talents overseas as well. Played overseas 13 seasons, 13 years. Um, got five championships overseas all over and um, now I'm back home, I'm giving back and I'm the head coach at Arlington High School. This is my third season, so. Wow, and then what brought you back to Arlington? Um, I mean, just, well, um, I, I got a phone call during the pandemic and um, saying that they needed a coach at the time. And um, at the time I was the assistant coach at Houston High School. Um, and, you know, I just felt like it was a great opportunity and I, 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 I took it and it's been cool ever since. That. Yeah, and then over this off season, I'm sure you guys have been training, getting ready for the season. What are some, or who are some big people that have kind of stepped up into lead roles that could help the team this season? Um, some of the leaders I have this year is, uh, we have our point guard, Brittany Wells, and um, we have uh, another guard, Jasmine Ross. Um, she's a senior this year. And, um, and then we just kind of have some of the lower classmen um, they're just kind of stepping up to the plate. Some of my juniors, um, Tierney Kelsey, um, Kimberly Nelson, Sydney Hurd. Um, so those type of players, you know, they, they, they're trying to be leaders every single day. And then kind of with leadership, how important is it for them and for you to kind of have this leadership and family type feel for the season? Um, it's, it's very important um, when you have that bond and chemistry. Um, on the floor, um, of course, it makes it easier. Um, you have that connection on the floor, um, and that's just the, you know the best part about it is is, is being a, a family, being a team, and um, those are the important things, and that's what makes it you know much better on the floor when you're bonding and have that chemistry off the floor as well. And then what are your what are your goals for this season for this team? Um, for the most part, is you know just compete, you know. Um, develop the players and and just go out each game and play our, play every game like it's our last. That's what I teach them. And like I said, it starts by competing. When you compete, then you understand the winning part. And after you compete, then that's when the wins begin. Um, no matter the, the losses, it's how you lose. Um, and so that's what I always stress to them. You know, you go out there and you fight, you fight, you fight until the end, no matter what. So, uh, but my goals for sure, you know, is just to get them better. Um, of course, you know, every, you know, kid want to win a, a state championship. Every coach want to win a state championship. Um, so that's our biggest thing, just taking one game at a time, um, getting back to the state tournament and grabbing it this time and making sure every senior gets a scholarship going to school. So that's the last, you know, most important thing after the season, make sure everybody is comfortable, they happy and going where they want to be, so. Yes, ma'am. And do you think state championship is in the works for this season? I have no doubt. For I sure. have no doubt in my mind. Good luck to my girls and I know we will have a great season and I'm ready. Well, this is gonna wrap it up for Coach's Corner. Thank you to Coach Shields for joining us on the show today. We're gonna send you back to the desk. Now it's time for the Tigers top five but we're gonna react and watch this one with you guys live. Let's get to it. Jackson Hare for the fifth slot of the day. 60 yard run there, that was huge for this game. It was the first game of the season. Jackson Hare needed a, we added him at running back, so it was a really big first play for him. We got number four, Jordan Batts. Moved to outside linebacker this year, obviously it paid off. Quick shout out, Jordan Batts. We did get you in the top five, don't worry, <laughs> with a big sack. Dude, that was a big hit early in the game. You can see his passion there after that one. Number three, Gabriel Torres. Man, this is going to be a 60-yard bomb right here. <laughs> He's taking that speed to track, though. Pretty good use of his time, as you can see, <laughs> running straight to the end zone right there. Outran everybody on that one. You're going to see this fun celebration, like a little bird right here. 
This is pretty cool. We missed him in the last, in the latter end of the season, but when he played, <laughs> he was so awesome. Number two got some volleyball action. I think they were down 2-0 in this game and ended they up coming were. back and winning. So it was really impressive. Won three sets in a row to take him down with that block by Zoe McDowell. This one was huge. You can see the passion here again. Even if you don't win district championships, it's always good to beat Bartlett. And you got, I don't know who that guy is, <laughs> but he was pretty excited about that play. Grant Roberson Jr., a guy that we're looking forward to, takes the top slot in the fall sleep. Ethan Smith, impact got on that fumble. one too. Recovered the fumble. That Yeah, that's a big number one play for yeah. sure. That was huge. I'm excited for him. Even though we're losing a lot of seniors this year, 35 to be exact, guys like that are guys I'm looking forward to. If he keeps going, he'll, he'll be special for the Tigers next year, especially mm -hmm. on defense. Now let's go to Evan Norman for What's Up Next. I'm Evan Norman with What's Up Next. The Lady Tigers beat Melrose in their first game of the season by a whopping score of 66-29. to Unfortunately, the boys lost their game against Melrose 64-70. The boys and girls play Fayette Ware at home on Thursday, the 17th. Come out and support their Tigers. Back to the desk. Me and Jake as the Men in Hoodies crew did something very special these past two weeks. We made actual Men in Hoodies hoodies. Don't forget Roman in that. Roman's a part of Men in Hoodies, too. I understand, yeah. but it's, it's all right. Just keep going. Okay, he knows. sorry, sorry, he knows sorry. We love him. For those of you that ordered, we appreciate you for being a true Men in Hoodies fan. Those will be ready and made by December 6th. I still love you, Roman, but... We also created a Men in Hoodies Instagram. If you do not follow that already, go check it out. We give you content all week, starting with Tuesday Trivia, Thursday Team of the Week, the weekly podcast, and the bi-weekly show announcements. That's all we have for you today on the show. Thank you for turning, tuning in, and have a great Thanksgiving break. Peace.